This is Arla. She has infantile onset of Pompe's disease. She was diagnosed in March 2020. And this is our I am Pompey Sloth. Hope. She likes to wrap it round her and give her cuddles. Anything that comes our way, we take it in our stride, don't we? Yes, definitely. We were sent up to Manchester Hospital. Meant I was unable to see Arla while in hospital. I was able to be granted a visit over the nine weeks she was in hospital. That took a lot of massive impact on our family because obviously kids were missing dad. I'd only recently given birth to Arla, so it felt like she had been taken away from me. We had a call from an on-call consultant at, at our local um, paediatric ward. Arla could have a metabolic disorder, which of course, if you, when someone says don't Google things, that's the first thing you, you do. do. Then when we finally got the diagnosis on the Monday, but then just letting you know over the phone, that was... Yeah, it was a bit horrible to get a, just a phone call home to say what was going on and that, you know, I couldn't even be there and, and give Liam a hug or give Arla a hug. And, and obviously when we got off the phone, I Googled it and probably the worst thing I could have done because it's, it doesn't seem to be anything positive. Portsmouth Football Club, that's the only thing we'd heard of Pompey. <laughs> so then when, of course, you know, then when you read about it and the history of it and there's only been a treatment for a certain amount of time, it really took us back, didn't it? So we've been, telling people what it is and people have become, I would say, more aware. We believe that newborn screening would be, it could literally save a child's life, it could save them from deteriorating, from not having a, a, a good quality of life. We are very lucky that Arla got diagnosed at a very, very young age where she didn't really have many she didn't even have many symptoms. Symptoms. There's no damage, no long-term damage caused by it. So some children haven't been diagnosed till six, eight months down the line where the damage has been caused and the ERT isn't more effective. We really would like it to be put on newborn screening. I don't understand why it isn't. At about three weeks old, got a horrible chesty cough. A bit like this one. <laughs> And um, I thought, oh, she picked up a horrible cold. She was born in January, obviously, so you're still over the, going through the winter period, winter bugs, and thought she picked it up off one of the kids from school, kept taking her back, and about two weeks later, it was, we'll give her a course of antibiotics just to clear it. Didn't clear. And one doctor at our GP surgery decided to say, I'm going to send her up to hospital. I want a paediatric review on her. So she got sent up the hospital. Doctor checked her chest. It's all clear, not a problem. And this one doctor that I won't ever forget said I'm just going to run a chest x-ray I just want to make sure her chest is clear. On this chest x-ray we found that she had hypertrophic cardiomyopathy which then led the clinician to run a heel prick test on her foot which then led to her early diagnosis but I feel that it could have been missed because it, unfortunately, what was on her lungs was fluid, not a cold. It was a, and her heart was swelling. Of course, starting the treatment was, you know, a very nerve-wracking day. You know, we had all this, these talks about reactions and things, and you know, she had a first treatment. Was it July we went to cardiology, mm -hmm. and her heart had completely returned back to normal. I like to say she was like a rabbit in the headlights. Her eyes were wide open. You know, she was in following me around the room. She was just, you could tell instantly that that first infusion really did something for her. I came in about three weeks after, didn't I? She had had three lots of infusion after I'd come into the hospital to see her. And I don't know, it. she did. She was like a completely different child. She was moving, kicking her legs and happy, smiling. We just noticed the difference, didn't we? And we still do, to this day, notice the difference every time that she has it and when she's due it and, and when she's run down. And... and now, looking back at that and how far we've come now, and she's walking and she's running around and jumping around on the trampoline. Yes, the, the trampoline kids, is and... one of Arla's favourite things to do. Not letting all those muscles waste away. You Getting her to use them. My outlook for the future, 
is positive than what it was when we first started this journey. It's when she took her first steps. I would say it was only been at the start of this year, after Christmas, after we moved to our new house and we were settled and our infusions came home, that really we did start to think very positively about it, didn't we? We did. Part of the Pompeii community now, we see other children such as Arla who are mobile and active, don't we? It's, it's, it's really nice and also older people as well with it. There is positives to it and yeah. everybody seems so positive and we're all together as a close-knit network that you do feel like you're not isolated so you can speak to your friends about it and things but there's no understanding because they've never been through it it's looking really well isn't it yeah and to possibly as they put it have a cure for this disease is just out of this world i know when someone mentioned gene therapy you think of frankenstein in a lab with all his you know messing with people's dna and things but if it was put to us, that option would bite the hand off for it, wouldn't we? Yeah. To know that somebody locally to us, we could talk to somebody. Because it was uh, um sister's boyfriend who said, um, I think my friend has a son with Pompey disease, obviously, because we told her. And she said, here's her name, give her a message and, and ask. And I messaged her, didn't I? And I thought, oh, I recognise this this person on the profile picture and it, it was it turned out it was her i don't know what the odds are to have two people two children with the same condition living in the same town really isn't it mm. literally a five minute walk from each other weekly enzyme replacement therapy look what it's done for arla i wouldn't say looking at arla that she looks like any different to a normal nearly two year old what was it that a assessment from a neuropsychologist yeah and we were told she scored one of the highest scores he's ever done on a child in a similar situation to Arla. And I said, oh, was that because it was caught early? And it was simple, wasn't it? No, it's because of the weekly treatment and that's all the evidence we need. Yeah, definitely the weekly treatment has benefited Arla really well and it's stopped her from deteriorating. You start to enjoy life more, don't you? Make the most of memories and creating memories with each other because you just don't know when them times might possibly be snatched away from you. In long term, keeping her strong will benefit her. Before our other children did, because she was younger than them, that, that, that really made us feel like that we were doing something right. Yeah. And, the treatment while she was on was working. You know, we just grabbed hold of the couch and just walked across the other room, like, wow. <laughs> the determination in Arla that, that she wasn't gonna let it get to her, that it wasn't gonna get her down, that's what that's what gave us the boost, wasn't it, to, to fight with her. Yeah. Having a disability, I don't see it as a negative thing. We're in a society now where it's disabilities are more common. I'd, I'd hope to say they're more accepted in this day and age but I'm proud of her and I'll always be proud of her. We won't ever let Pom Pompeii disease ever define who Arla and who us as a family are, will we?